Today, all right, we have much to cover. So we believe that um, <laughs> God gives us grace. And since it's a Friday, uh, we'll try and finish Colossians chapter 2 today uh, because we are on verse number 11. And I, by the grace of God, yesterday I started with the, um, as we heard the, and learned, yesterday I started with the verse number 11, the circumcision which is not made with hands. So we read it mm. today. We read it today, what scripture is oh. saying. And uh, I know that we're going to be blessed. Okay, so in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible says that, in whom ye were also circumcised, with a circumcision not made with hands, in the putting off of the body of the flesh, in the circumcision oh. of Christ. And um, oh. yesterday we understood uh, that we are completing him. We have imbibed mm. influence even over the authorities and governors mm. and principalities mm. and the sovereignties of God. Now, mm. this scripture in Colossians 2 verse 11, I mentioned yesterday about self-righteousness and the righteousness of God. And we stood mm. on Galatians chapter, 13, uh, chapter 3 from verse 13 to understand mm. what self-righteousness looks like. And we said, he that begins in the law, Bible says the same one continued therein. And if he continues therein, then he's subject to the judgment of the law. So he's mm. justified by the law and not by faith. Mm. So we understood mm. from yesterday's um, writings of Paul in Galatians chapter 3, that self-righteousness is actually what Bible calls the curse. Because of course, he starts from verse 9. 10, 11, 12. Then he says in 13, Cursed, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, and curse is every mm. man that hangeth on the tree. That mm. the blessing of Abraham might come unto us who are the Gentiles. So he came mm. to explain to us that we have been redeemed from self righteousness to receive God's righteousness. Indeed, Paul said it in Hebrews chapter 10, the verse 19, that having therefore boldness to enter into the holiest of all. Through the blood. So the blood is what gives us access to the throne of God. Not our mm. righteousness, not how much we have prayed, mm. not how good we have been. Many times Christians measure how God deals with them based on how good they mm. have been. God does mm. not deal with us on the premise of merit. Our salvation is on the premise mm. of grace, not on the premise of merit. Remember in Titus chapter 3, Paul said, not by works of grace that any man should boast. Not by um, 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 any man's works that any man should boast, but by grace are ye saved, okay? By the washing of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. In Titus chapter 3 verse 5, by his oh. mercy are ye saved, you know, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. In Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Oh. So by no man's work is any man saved. So we are not saved oh. on the premise of works. We are saved on the premise of grace and mercy. So by that premise, we must understand that we don't have access to God and with God based on our good works. It is not how well we fasted. In fact, it's not even based on what you did. It is also, based, it's also not based on what you have not done. So if you've not even prayed enough, even if you've not fasted enough, you still have access because your access passcode is actually on the basis of the blood. The blood gives you entrance. So the blood is like a oh. canopy. When you get drenched oh. in the blood, you have access. Why? Oh. Once oh. you get drenched in the blood, it implies that you are coated with the blood, which implies that oh. you have passed through death. And once you have oh. passed through death, you have access. And that's what scripture was saying. And Paul, oh. in his communication to us, went further to oh. give us, after he had explained the concept of righteousness in Romans chapter 3, mm. he came to give mm. us the example of righteousness in Romans chapter 4 by, by Abraham. He spoke about, see that our father Abraham, how that he received righteousness through faith. Mm. Then he came to speak about the blessedness of Abraham, how the blessedness of a man mm. who has his sins not imputed against him. And the Bible spoke about how David was prophesying mm. about this. And Romans chapter mm. 4 now communicates the example, the person who typified that example of righteousness through faith. Okay, so when you read mm. Romans 4, you see the example of righteousness exemplified 
in that description of Abraham. And Paul is saying that, and of course we went into that, we, 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 we touched on that last time. So, but Paul is saying something very intriguing. He says that we have received a certain type of circumcision. And Philippians 3, 1 said, Brethren, to write these things unto you again for me is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Mm. Paul was writing mm. to the church and said, I'm repeating myself again. Let me say this in mm. person. As Christians and as children of God, we must understand that repetition is for the emphasis of moving what you have heard from your head to your heart. It does not mean your pastor does not know what he's saying. Paul said, for me to repeat myself, it's not grievous mm. at all, but for you mm. it is safe. And the word safe is mm. the word sozo. It will cause you to receive mm. salvation. It will cause you mm. to receive an entrance into liberty. So it is safe for you for me to repeat myself. So actually, it is safe for your pastor to repeat himself in many messages and many subjects. It's necessary mm -hmm. for repetition because the art of intro, in, indoctrination requires repetition. Okay, yeah. it requires repetition. So the moment Paul says that, he comes to verse 2 to say, beware of the evil worker or beware of dogs. Then beware of mm -hmm. evil workers. Then beware of the mm -hmm. concession. These are three categories mm -hmm. of people Paul was addressing. Now, the oh. Jews called oh. the Gentiles, the Romans, oh. dogs. Oh. Remember in Matthew 15, Jesus said to the Syrophoenician woman, food oh. or bread meant for children is not given to dogs. Oh. Then the woman said, oh. nevertheless, sir, the crumbs from the table, oh. the dogs can eat it. And Jesus said, thou art justified in that oh. saying. Then her daughter, he said, your oh. daughter is healed this hour. In Matthew 15, so dogs mm. represents the Gentiles. And when Paul was talking mm. about dogs, he was not being racist. He was speaking mm. about gentilic practices, the, mm. the acts of the Gentiles. So he said, beware of how the Gentiles mm. operate. Number two, mm. he spoke about evil mm. workers. Now, evil workers, the word mm. is kakos, 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 mm. kakos and egos. So the, the kakos, evil mm. workers are people who actually do things or operates contrary to the will of God. Kakos is opposite to mm. the will of God. Mm. Okay, that's what mm. Jesus said. Yeah. He, um, get thee behind me, ye worker of iniquity. You are out iniquity. of God's will. You did what you wanted. Yeah. You didn't do my will. So Paul said, beware yeah. of people who yeah. also do their will. These are evil workers. Mm. Mm. Okay, then he comes mm. to mention another group of people, the concession. Mm. Now the concession was the mm. Jews. Okay. Because the Jews were they that believed that they were the people that mm. had received the covenant of circumcision. Mm. So remember in the, the, mm. uh, the, the, the Acts of the Apostles, the historical mm. um, write-up of the church. Paul mm. now says mm. that Paul was sent as an apostle to the uncircumcision and Peter mm. the apostle to the circumcision. But Paul is saying that mm. the Jews are not the circumcision. They are actually the concession. Because they have done a physical cutting. Mm. Then he comes to explain mm. why he's saying what he's saying in verse 3. We are the circumcision. That is the church. <laughs> he said the mm. church is the circumcision, not the Jews. Mm. Why is he saying what he's saying in Philippians chapter 3, verse number 3? That we are the circumcision that mm. worship God. Now look how he said. That worship God. So I'm explaining this to explain the circumcision that Paul is saying in Colossians, that is a circumcision not mm. made with hands. So Paul is saying in mm. Colossians chapter 2, verse 11, that the, the circumcision made with hands is actually called concession. It is a ritual mm. cutting. It is a ceremonial cutting. It is not real mm. circumcision. He is saying in Philippians mm. 3 that we are the circumcision. Okay? We, verse 3, before mm. we are the circumcision, yeah. That, uh -huh, for we are the which worship God in the spirit. Jesus said in, in John spirit. 4, from 4 onwards, he said, we, he said, a time is coming that they that worship God must worship him in spirit. And he was saying to the Samaritans, the Samaritan woman, he said, the, he said, ye worship what you do not know. And the Jews worship not in know. the mountain. Mm. You see, but there's coming a time mm. that we shall worship God in the spirit. So he said, the Jews who didn't move to the gospel, they were still worshipping mm. according to ritual. And so Paul said, they mm. are no more the circumcision. We mm. are the circumcision that worship God in the spirit. Mm. And the Bible says that, and rejoice in mm. Christ Jesus. Mm. 
and have no confidence in the flesh. The Jews had confidence mm. in the flesh. The Jews had confidence mm. in their birthright. So if you check what Paul was saying right after that in verse 4, he said that I might mm. also have confidence in the flesh. If any man mm. thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh I more. Because the Jews had a superiority mm. complex that they are the chosen of God and every other person mm. is a Gentile. Mm. So it was so serious that if a Jew eats with a non-Jew, they will break the plates upon realization because they feel that you are not in their class. Mm -hmm. And that is actually what Jesus mm -hmm. did in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. He broke the middle wall of partition that separated enmity yeah. according to the law yeah. of commandment. So the law of the commandment yeah. said, Israel is my people. They must not mingle with the heathen. Mm. They must not mingle with mm. the non-Jews. So the moment you mingle mm. with the non-Jews, you have contaminated their stock. But the mm. Bible says Jesus, when he came, he broke the middle wall of partition and made of twain, mm. the word twain is of made of two, Gentiles and Greek, mm. one new man. Mm. Mm. Gentiles and Jews, sorry, one mm. new man. He, he merged us together as the new man. So that in Christ Jesus, there is neither Jew, neither Gentile, neither no, barbarian, neither Scythian. You see, neither, you know, there's no classism. He had broken mm. all that middle wall, but one new man in Christ Jesus. I need my question. And Paul was now saying mm. that there's a pedigree of the Jews. Mm. Now I'm going to enter mm. something very important. What was Jesus circumcising mm. according to Colossians chapter 2 verse 11? He said this circumcision is not a circumcision mm. made with hand, but it is the circumcision which mm. occurred in Christ. Mm. It is the circumcision mm. of the body of sins of the flesh. Mm. So this circumcision was not the removal of foreskin. It was the circumcision yeah. of the remover. The word sins here, you, you'll notice it in the next uh, 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 two verses. That is in verse 13. But this sin he's talking about is the word hamashia. In 13, it is paraptoma. But in Ham the, when he mm. talks about hamashia, hamashia is offense. Mm. Mm. And offense also typifies mm. the fall. So if you transliterate mm. it literally, it means that he circumcised mm. us from the body of the fall, the body of the mm. offense. According to Romans chapter mm. 5, he says, by the offense of one man, death has reigned. So he's saying that right. the circumcision is a separation from the Adamic nature. Mm. And the circumcision okay. from Adam, because he says the offense of one man, and he's saying here that the body of the offense, the, the organization mm. of that offense is actually Adam. Mm. And that, uh, that circumcision mm. didn't happen by hands. It happened in mm. a supernatural situation on the cross. Mm. So he said the mm. circumcision mm. of Christ it happened on the mm. cross. And how did it happen on the cross? Mm. And why did it happen on the cross? Bible said that in Genesis chapter 1, Okay, now this flesh, I'm going to address mm. it so you understand where Paul is coming from and the reason why he was very antagonistic concerning Gnosticism. Because Gnosticism yeah. is actually a mental aggrandizement, a mental picture, mm. a mental scientific mm. arrangement of how the universe mm. should work. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, mm. today Gnosticism has entered the church silently. We are Gnostics uh, unknown. We are Gnostics quietly. It's like if the thing does not make sense to our mind, then it is not, it's not correct. Or you are contradicting yourself. Or you are lying. Oh, it's not true. Because we don't take our time. And let me say this to everyone listening to me and having uh, being part mm. of this audience. You must understand mm. that the Quran was written in Arabic by Muhammad. There was one author of the Quran, mm. Arabic, by Muhammad. And the Quran is read in Arabic, interpreted in Arabic. So there is no much loss in communication when the Quran is read. Mm. But with the Bible, there are 40 authors over the space of 1,600 years. They did not meet themselves. Mm. Moses wrote mm. the first five and scribes, some, some authors we don't even know, especially Chronicles and Kings, they were written in palaces. So the prophets will say, mm. are they not written in the annals of the king? The annals of the yeah. king is actually yeah. the book of Chronicles. So it's the annals yeah. of the kings. Every king and what they did, how they mm. served God, was written in the book of Chronicles. And it was written by the scribes in the temple. So 40 different mm. authors authored the Bible over the space of 1,600 mm. years. All right, they didn't know themselves. 
I'm telling you the gospel. Today. They didn't know themselves. It's not like, oh, what, what did you write here? It, when you even come to the mm. gospels, they were, they, were, they, were, <laughs> they were different authors of the gospels. Mark wrote his own, yeah. Matthew wrote his own, Luke yeah. wrote his own. And they wrote Luke it in the span oh. of less than 10 years after their encounter with Christ. Mm. Mm. And don't say, oh, they lied. Because if they lied, when they wrote their epistles and the gospel, those that were around could have refuted what was written because they were alive. Actually, yeah. Colossians was even yeah. written in AD 60, just about 30 years after Jesus Christ had, been, had started his ministry. Oh. So virtually all the people that were alive when Jesus was alive, Colossians was, was written there. Oh. In fact, it is believed, <laughs> it is believed that, uh, what they call it, Titus, Titus was around four years when the church received the day of Pentecost. Mm. So that's why it's mm. so 13, 14 years later, Paul said about 14 years ago, around his conversion. Mm. So 14 plus mm. the number of years that Titus was. Titus around 17, 18 when he was following Paul, the apostle. So if wow. you look at all the timelines, these things couldn't be aligned. But the thing is that the Old Testament was written in a language called uh, the Hebrew. The New Testament Gospels was written in Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Jesus spoke Aramaic. Sometimes he spoke, it was a Jewish local dialect. Okay? It was mm. a Jewish local dialect called Aramaic. So there was the Aramaic and there was the Hebrew tongue. So it was a mixture of both mm. Aramaic and the Hebrew tongue. Now he was from Nazareth, so their tongue was Aramaic. Then mm. the apostles who wrote the epistles wrote it in Greek because it was the language okay. of the day like how we write in english though we are Guyanians, we are french okay. we are japanese we write in english because it's yeah. the standardized universal yeah. language of the world at that time yeah. we wrote it in the latin greek tense mm. okay mm. then we how also during the the inception of the roman the roman invasion and roman empire the greek language was transliterated together with aramaic and the hebrew to the latin so the old versions, Jerome's Bible, St. Jerome's Bible, mm. and uh, what do you call it, RV margin, the original texts from mm. the, the first mm. translations were written in Latin. Then William mm. Tyndale and the rest came to translate the Latin to English. So there's, okay. if you don't take it, when you read it in English, if you don't take it, you will not understand, for instance, there are things when you read in the Bible, especially in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, in the Gospels, mm. when a Jew mm. reads it, he understands what is going on. Mm. But it is not our culture. It is not mm. our culture. So we get lost in translation because everything we read as mm. normal human beings, we try to merge it into our state of existence, how it looks in mm. our time. So that's why if you are not yeah. careful, you must misappropriate what is being communicated. Mm. 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 All right. So mm. having said this, I'm trying to explain something to, to, to get your point to understand what circumcision occurred. Now, this circumcision occurred yeah. on the cross. And the reason it occurred on the mm. cross was to deal with a certain enemy called the mm. flesh. Okay. Brothers and sisters, the issue has been the flesh from the beginning. The mm. issue has been the flesh from the beginning. Paul said in Romans chapter 7 that in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Mm. Look, if you ever get disappointed as a Christian or as a human being that you are disappointed that you did mm. or lied, you have not yet known the flesh. Mm. If you know the flesh, you will mm. not be disappointed. You know it is, it is there. It is in the flesh. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> it? The flesh is in the flesh. But the shocking thing about the flesh was that Adam didn't know he was employing the flesh in Genesis. Now the flesh mm. is the strength of self-righteousness. Mm. Anytime you say, I will try not to fornicate, I will try not to masturbate, I will try not to lie, I will try to be patient, I will try, I will try. The language I is called the flesh. Mm. And this is the foundation of sin. Remember in Isaiah mm. 14, from verse 12, Lucifer, the mm. glorious angel, had said mm. in his heart, I will ascend my throne into the throne of God. I will become like the most high. Mm. I. He was invoking mm. self. E.W. Kinyon mm. said self is the womb from which 77 times 7 sins are birthed from. Self. And that hey, is hey. the flesh. <laughs> that is the flesh. When Lucifer 
purported to have his own, I will ascend the throne. Have you noticed that any time mm. Peter said the same thing? And I'll show you how come that happened. Mm. Now, mm. he used the I, I, my flesh, myself, I, I will, I will, I will. Then finally, when this happened, he went to the garden and decided to tempt Adam. And when he was about to tempt Adam, do you know what he did? He tempted Adam with the same thing that caused him to create mm. and birth sin, the I. Mm. He comes to him in chapter 3 of Genesis and said, has God said, if you eat this tree, you mm. will die? Mm. And he said, yes. Mm. He said, yes. When we eat this tree, we will die. He said, no, it's not true. God lied. God is mm. lying. When you eat this tree, you will be like God. In fact, if you check the original text and you take your time to read it, you see, sometimes you have to take our time to read the Bible and verify mm. it like the Bereans. In Genesis chapter yeah. 3, if you check the text very well, it is not you will be like God. Listen to the language in verse 5. Mm. He said, mm. for God doth mm. know that in the day ye eat thereof, then ye, your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods. Mm. Not as God. As gods. Mm. Mm. As then God. Adam. As gods. Because Lucifer said, I will ascend my throne into the throne of mm. the mountain of the gods. So you will mm. be as the thing I was designed. Um, so he was pushing the element of generation of flesh. Now listen. The moment he did that, all of a sudden Adam was thinking about it. Because check it. Bible says when Eve ate it, she saw that the food was good for eating. Then all of a sudden, mm. she gave it to Adam uh, in verse, what do you call it, six. He says, and when yeah. the woman saw that the, truth, the food was good for food and it was pleasant for the eyes and the tree desired to be eaten for food and did eat it, she also gave oh. it to her husband with her. So Satan was standing yeah. there. Uh, sorry, Adam was standing there when Lucifer was tempting the wife. <laughs> no wonder Paul said in the book of Timothy that the woman was deceived, but Adam was not deceived. It means that Adam had full information and knew very well what he was doing. So in that wow. full information, Adam was, he deliberately ate the tree. Because Bible says it was the woman that was deceived. Adam was not deceived. He knew what he was doing. And why did he know what he was doing? Inside Adam's heart was this thought. God said, I have made you in my image and in my likeness. I have created you in my image and in my likeness. That's what God said. I have created you in my image and in my likeness. Oh. Yet, Adam is tempted by the devil to try to eat the fruit to be even lower than what God has made him. Mm. The problem with the human oh. race is because oh. of this thing Adam did. Oh. This is what Adam did. The oh. act of Adam was this. He wanted to use his effort to get oh. what God had freely given. This is the flesh. Oh. God said you are my righteousness, wow. but we want to use our works mm. to feel that we are really the righteousness of God. That is the ah. temptation from the beginning. Uh, and that's why we keep failing. I have made you my righteousness. You are my image and my, like, my likeness. Yet all of a sudden, Adam said, I want to eat the fruit. I want to do mm. something to become like God. And God said, you don't need to mm. do something. I have already made you like myself. Mm. He didn't accept the gift mm. of righteousness. Mm. He wanted to do something mm. to, to merit it. And that's what plunged mm. Adam into the problem. And listen to this. Mm. When God was mm. now cursing man, he said, the, the mm. dust shall you return. Yet he had told the mm. serpent prior that you, mm. serpent, you will eat the dust of the earth. So he's saying that mm. now if Adam is going to return to the dust and his the food for the serpent, serpent is the flesh. Because remember, when God created man, man was the image and likeness of God. When man fell short yeah. of God's glory, he said, all have sinned mm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Then the Bible right. says, Adam became flesh. He was called man. Then he degraded to mm. flesh. All flesh is grass. Mm. So is the goodliness mm. thereof. So the moment man mm. left that realm, he entered the realm of mm. flesh. And the realm of flesh mm. is food for the devil. That is why from the mm. scriptures in Romans chapter 5, he said, from mm. Adam to Moses, death reigned from Adam mm. to Moses. 
The yeah. law brought yeah. a certain injunction against the operation of death, the free operation mm. of death. Why? Because Satan mm. had a field day destroying mm. and provoking and doing what he wanted with humanity because man mm. had now become flesh. Mm. Mm. Man had now become flesh. And this is the problem with Peter. When Peter mm. told the Lord, I will, not dist- I will not betray you. I, I, yeah. Lord, I will I. not betray you. I will be there. Mm. I will die with you. Jesus mm. immediately looked at Peter mm. and said, Oh, mm. Simon, Simon, mm. Satan soft to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed mm. for thee. Jesus didn't say this. Listen mm. to this. Jesus didn't say, I have stopped him. He said, I have rather prayed for thee. In other words, what was happening mm. was this, that when Lucifer realized that Adam and um, Peter had now come to the realm of the flesh, where he was invoking mm. the strength of the flesh, the anointing of mm. the flesh, the ability of the flesh, mm. he reduced himself mm. to Satan's food. So even the Lord couldn't stop mm. him. He said, I've, he said, I'd rather mm. pray for you so that you'll be able to stand. Mm. Brothers and sisters, mm. when you start the year, don't say this year I will be holy. This year I'll be faithful. Mm. No. It is resolution. Mm. Resolution means there's a picture the Lord has given you. Just resolve your ima- mm. the image and focus on it. Mm. Resolve the image wow. God has given for the year. Don't try making plans. Because the moment you enter that, I will do this, I will do this, without the anointing of the Spirit, mm. and you are doing it on your own, mm. you will go against the very thing mm. you plan not to do. Mm. You will go opposite mm. it because the moment you say, I will not fornicate. I will not cheat. Mm. I will not lie. Mm. You have become Satan's mm. food. Satan has, the word sought to mm. save you, the word sought is a legal term, means he entered the court of heaven and legally demanded mm. you as his food. Because according to scripture, mm. he, must eat, he must eat dust and the dust is the flesh. Wow. <laughs> that is why anytime you employ the strength of the flesh, you always feel, you get frustrated. And Paul was doing that in Romans 7. He said, I've tried that. The good I want to do. He said, the good I want to do, I realize I cannot do. But the, the evil I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. He said, mm. oh, wretched man I am, mm. who shall deliver me mm. from this body? Mm. You see, the same body. Who shall mm. deliver me from this mm. body, this encumbrance, mm. lifeless encumbrance mm. of death? It's a body of death, a mm. body of offense. It is an encumbrance upon you. Mm. So, brother, you can be holy, you can be a child of God, but mm. if you don't realize mm. the auspices mm. of the flesh, for instance, God delivers mm. you from masturbation. Then after two weeks, mm. you have not had an, an, a single mm. iota of appetite to masturbate. Mm. Then all of a sudden, you go like, whoa, it's been two weeks. I have not done this. Oh, 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 I feel good about myself. The moment you activate I, that night or a day after, you will double all the ones you missed for two weeks <laughs> because you want to celebrate in the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> you began to count in the flesh when you get lost in the Lord you realize that it's not even worth celebrating there are higher matters you are so long ah. God, the Holy Ghost. listen let me show you something anytime you want to celebrate a deliverance from a certain addiction it should be the Holy Ghost who reminds you and like Paul said when oh. you remember after you followed after the damn idols in your former conversations he reminded them in the Holy mm. Ghost and Paul also said, mm. these things are not even legal for us to mention amongst you. Mm. You don't need to, I'm mm. telling you, if, if you don't take care, you enter a path, you will always be frustrated. You will be wretched. You will just wonder, Lord, so when? Stop employing yourself. You know that ah. you, there's nothing good. Fuck yourself. Nothing. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now, this is what he said. So he said there's a circumcision. And the circumcision occurred. Mm. It was the cutting away. Mm. <laughs> it was the peritamno. Mm. It was the cutting away. Mm. The cutting mm. away. And listen to this. In verse 12, he now says that now we are buried. Mm. We are buried mm. with him in death. Mm. We are buried in him in death. All right? We are buried in him in mm. death. Mm. And this burial mm. is actually an event that has already occurred. Mm. In fact, it is in a certain tense called an aorist tense. It has already occurred in eternity. We Mm. are buried together with Mm. him in death. Mm. Mm. You must understand this. We are buried. (laughs) We are buried with him in death and in baptism. Okay? Mm. So the burial we have Mm. gone through is by process of baptism. And actually, literally, 
Paul was now alluding to a certain type of event because he was talking to the church. Mm. Mm. And this baptism is the word baptism. And the baptism actually has to do with dipping into the water. Brothers and sisters, anytime you are baptized in water, entering the water typifies dying with Christ. <laughs> yeah. There are times it talks about the baptism in the spirit, into the spirit, into the Lord. But this one, it was, if you notice, he didn't add the modifiers of into Christ. He said, buried with him in baptism. And this baptism had to do with how they were baptized in water. Then he says, where will you also, okay, have risen with him. And the word risen with him here is actually you have been quickened, brought to life again. Okay. And being brought to life, (laughs) <laughs> being brought to life, position us in a place where it says, according to the faith of the mm. operation. Operation there is the energy of God. Mm. Mm. Who mm. has raised him from, from the dead? Mm. Who has raised him from the dead? And how is this possible? When you go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11, he says, if this same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. Uh, time will fail me to talk about this. Anytime you read in the Bible, the hand of the Lord came on someone. If you check medieval languages in the era of the kings, the hand mm. of the king was not his literal hand. It was a human being. Mm. Mm. It was him that carried out the biddings of the king. So he's called the hand of a mm. king. Mm. So the hand of God is actually the one that does the operation of God. In this case, mm. the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So anytime the Holy Spirit shows wow. up, you should know God is acting. Let me put it this way. Uh, mm. <laughs> the application of God to us is the Spirit. When God is applied to us, mm. is the Spirit. When God is manifested to mm. us, is the, is the Son. But when God applies to mm. us, is the Spirit. Mm. So mm. what happens is this, that in Genesis, the Bible says, and the Lord God caused the mist to come upon the earth and to water the earth. Mm. And God began to fashion man out of the clay. But when you get to Job um, Job chapter 33, the verse number four, uh, he he speaks about how that the spirit of the Lord, verse four, he said, the spirit of the almighty Mm. has made me. Mm. Genesis said it was God who, (laughs) you know, who was made, okay? He was made according to Genesis chapter Mm. 2 verse 7. But Job is saying mm. it is the spirit who actually made God, who made Adam. Mm. Adam. So when God is acting, it is the spirit that, that, that's why the spirit is called manifestation. The spirit is the action mm. of God. Mm. But the content of the action is the word of God. So check mm. it. According to Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says, when Adam heard the voice from verse 9, 8, 9, 10, he said, and I heard thy voice in the cool of the day. The word cool is the word ruach, which is wind. Which when you mm. translate it in the Septuagint, it means spirit. So actually, literally, he says, I heard thy voice in the spirit of the day. The pictogram of that mm. statement implies that the voice of God sat in the vehicle of the spirit to come to Adam, to visit him. Mm. So the spirit was now the method by which the voice appeared or came to Adam. If you want to understand it, check Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 1, check what do you call it? Mm. Revelation chapter 4. He said, I was in the spirit on the mm. Lord's day and the voice of the Lord came. Mm. So without the spirit, you can't mm. access the voice. What he's trying to say is this, that what we have been buried in is a, it's an event that has occurred in the past. But it has functionality now. And this operation is based mm. on the spirit's work in our life. Who raised Christ mm. from the dead? Mm. Who raised Christ from the dead? Brothers and sisters, who raised Christ from the dead? Then it says in verse 13, and you being dead in your sins. And now this word sins here is the word paraptoma. And what this paraptoma has to do with our trespasses. And the trespasses is mm. this. Let me show you. When we talk of sin offering, it has a certain level of deliberateness to it. Trespass it's like mm. the word David prayed and said, deliver me from presumptuous sins. And even sins yeah. I didn't know I committed. Mm. And he's saying that mm. because we were in offense, we didn't even know the things we were doing was contrary to God. We were just doing mm. anything anyhow. Mm. And Bible says, when he raised mm. us, he mm. delivered us mm. and cleansed us mm. 
Mm. Mm. From the things we're, we're mm. dead to, for instance, we're dead to the, for instance, mm. um, at, let me show you a secret. Now, the moment mm. the anointing of God comes on you, for instance, when you were not mm. a believer, mm. you lied without realizing you had lied. In fact, you knew you had lied, but mm. it was not a problem to you. It was second nature. Mm. You didn't need to be put under pressure to lie. Like you can lie by concoction. Mm. You can divine, device your lies <laughs> like effortlessly. Number two, you didn't need to cheat. I mean, all those sexual things. It was not, it was not, it was second nature. Like you are dating, you are like, ah, why, yeah. why, why shouldn't we do something? It's normal. Why should, it's not a problem. But the moment you got born again, the sensing of the spirit entered you. This yeah. is the quickening effect. Before you sin in Christ, Satan programs your sinning. The Holy Ghost also warns you against that day. Mm. What I mean by that is he will tell you, don't accept this lady as your friend. And all of us will be honest. Aye. There are some people Aye. we disobey to hear that this person shouldn't be close. But we allow it. And Aye. trouble started. That's the hey. work of the Holy Spirit. That is the sensing dimension of the Spirit. So in the New Testament, you don't sin by default. By saying that because they were dead in their errors, they didn't even know. They were doing things they didn't even know. Was, they were dead. It means there was no sensing. There was no living witness. There was no, nothing convicted you when you lied. Like it was normal. You didn't even feel the need to. But today, you don't even lie a major lie. A little, a little, a little. <laughs> a major lie. A little. A little pressure, you see, if any exaggeration, when you exaggerate a little, you get to your room and you just realize, ah, I shouldn't have said what I said. Ah, no, no. So even call the person and say, oh, actually, it's not like that. Though. It means it's actually this. That's, that's the spirit of God inside you. May we not be past feeling. <laughs> May we not be past feeling. And this is what scripture says. It says, oh, glory to God. Then he says, Kim I'm, go I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. All right? Now, he says that he has then, all right, in mm. verse number 12 and 13, mm. okay, mm. please follow very well because we are come to enter into another discourse. That's very mm. Uh, mm. intense with what Paul was saying. In mm. verse 12, it, verse 13, it says, and ye being dead in sins, in your sins, and the circumcision, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, so he's saying that mm. when you were dead, the reason why you did the things you did, the trespasses, the mistakes, the errors, was because you were uncircumcised from the flesh. Mm. So the flesh was still alive. You were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. That's what caused you to do the things you did. Listen, in the flesh is something called self-preservation. In the flesh, you will mm. throw your friends under the bus when there is trouble because you want to be. De sure. There is something called divine. Like there is a nature in man. Everyone wants to preserve, preserve himself. I'm telling you, in the flesh, you can even cross the road and leave your children because you want to preserve your life and leave your children at the other side, or even run and your wife will be on the other side and say, "Ah, you want to die?" <laughs> and you have left your wife. Self preservation. <laughs> it has the flesh. <laughs> It, so you can be in trouble and it's like who did this and all of a sudden it dawns on you start mentioning names you start calling everybody so that it's like ah it's not me i didn't do it self-preservation let me show you a secret today <laughs> when you operate in the divine life bible says when he was insulted he did not respond mm. when you start operating in divine life let me show you a secret when you are even falsely accused you don't see the need to respond oh mm. Oh, Jesus. I heard a story of a, a pastor in, in, in a certain ministry. And the senior pastor heard something that had gone wrong and started accusing the pastor. And when the pastor was being accused and addressed at pastor's conference, you know, he didn't change his countenance. He rather went face flat and started saying, Pastor, mercy. Pastor, mercy. Pastor, mercy. Pastor, mercy. Then when the meeting was ended, he stood on his feet, collecting all the blame, and he was not the one. He never oh. once called the man of God to say, Papa, I was not the one who did the things you accused me of. He just sat down quietly. Then the senior pastor realized after two weeks that it was another pastor who had caused the error. So he now called the pastor and said, Oh, I realize you are not the one who did this thing, but you never also defended yourself. You know what the senior pastor says? He said, That's the spirit of Christ. He, he was oh. impressed that he never had an iota within 
to go and say, I'm not the one who did it. It's this guy rather. He rather accepted the blame and said, Father, Pastor Messi, Pastor Messi, this is the divine life. Jesus was silent before Pilate. Lies after lies. So Pilate went to say, I have power to kill you. He said, no, no, that one, I'll correct you. I'm (laughs) dying. He told Pilate, I'm dying. You are not killing me. I'm being, I'm dying. You can't kill me. If I don't die, you will. If I don't want to die, you can't do anything. Then he said, continue accusing me. Then he kept, he kept standing there. And Pilate was leveling accusation, the Sahindran, and not once did he respond. That's the divine life. When you, the divine life grows in you, I'm telling you, that one of the tests is character assassination and no impulse to respond sure. to it. Uh, uh, write horrible things about you, insult you everywhere. But like Papa Hagen, he will say, rather unfortunate. And continue with the same one. <laughs> But this is it. This is it. It's a glorious life. Hallelujah. This is it. And he says, Praise God. Yeah. And he said, And have raised us with him. Okay. Mm. He has quickened us together. Okay. Have quickened us together mm. with him. Now, it is similar mm. to the first one, risen. Okay. But the Greek language separates okay. them. According to verse 12. He said, wherein ye are risen with him. But in 13, he said, we are quickened together with him. Mm. Now, listen to me very well. When he was raising us up with him, he gave us a certain dimension of coming to life. Mm. He quickened us to come to life by the end there. So he had to add 13 Mm. and said, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together. Notice that he said, we were buried with him wherein we have been raised with him. Mm. So the action of raising is the word sangero. And sangero implies the raising of the person. But 13 is saying that Mm. we were not just raised. We were quickened together with him. And the word here is um, suzupoyo. And suzupoyo or mm. S-U-Z-O-O Poyo. Suzo Poyo. And mm. Suzo Poyo communicates something that's a little different from just being risen up. So your, mm. Suzo Poyo has an mm-hmm. animation. Okay? Mm. We are raised, but mm. we are also animated. And not just animated. Mm. We are animated conjointly. So actually, in our raising up, in the spirit, we are conjoined twins with Christ. That's what it means. So we are conjoined with the Lord. He can't go without us. Hallelujah. <laughs> and we can Hallelujah. also go without him. We are conjoined. Hallelujah. Do you oh. understand? And that's how, if, if you yeah. check what conjoined twins, they are joined at a certain part of their body. And that's what scripture is saying. Is this, mm. That word, suzopoyo, suzopoyo, actually implies mm. conjointment. Mm. A certain conjointment animated with the same life onto original estate. Hmm. So it's a reanimation. We didn't just come alive and we are alive. So it's like hmm. in the first instance, we were dead and buried with him by hmm. baptism. And when we raised us up, hmm. he was talking of the fiscal coming out of the water. So we are alive as, hmm. as new people. So the raising up was yeah. a fiscal action. But in the spirit, mm. he's saying in verse 13 that we have come to a certain place where we were reanimated with Christ. A conjoinment with Christ. So what flows through Christ is flowing mm. through us. Where Christ is sitting mm. is where we also sit. <laughs> That's why he said we are seated mm. together with him in heavenly places. Mm. It's a conjoinment. Mm. Remember, we are the body of Christ. So it means wherever we go, we are, we are, it's like we are inseparable. That's what the scripture is. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Because you are conjoined with Christ. You are conjoined with Christ. We are, we are reanimated to original estates. <laughs> and, 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 this, and, 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 and this is a mystery in itself. Then it comes to say in verse 14. Mm. Now this, this, this is where the thing gets interesting. In verse 14, he says now that 
Mm. Now, blotting out all the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and which was contrary to us, <laughs> he took it out of the way mm. and nailed it to the mm. cross. Now, we've quoted this thing many mm. times, but I would Now, he said the word blot out is actually aorist participle. It is past. Mm. And when we say mm. aorist participle, it's an event that has mm. occurred in the past but has mm. a certain dimension of oppression in the present. Mm. Okay? So he has blotted it out once and for all. And mm. that action has effect till now. So it was blotted out mm. once and for all. It's, a, it's, a, it's an event that occurred once. Okay? Mm. And when it blotted out, he said he blotted it out one time event. Ordinances, and mm. these are actually traditions from mm. the law. Remember, there are moral laws, Levitical laws, dietary yeah. laws, and the exact Ten Commandments. So the total laws, mm. Mosaic economy and the Mosaic administration had 613 laws. Ten of which was what was given on the tablet. 603 came uh -huh. from the administration of Moses. Hear me well. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 19 when they came with the bill of divorcement. Now should we divorce anybody mm. because of any reason? Then Jesus said from the beginning it was mm. not so. A man was created mm. for a woman, but because of the hardness of your heart, Moses said you can divorce for any reason. Because they were not ready, mm -hmm. they were not spiritual. Mm. So Moses allowed that law. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's why yeah. no wonder Paul called it the administration of death. The law is not death, it was how it was ministered that killed. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Then he says that it was contrary to us or against us. Ordinances against us. What were those ordinances? These Jewish customs. If you are not a Jew, you cannot be baptized. Mm. If you are not a Jew, you cannot be circumcised. Mm. If you are not a Jew, a lot of things cannot mm. happen to you. Mm. So the ordinances mm. and the laws and the rules and the requirements were designed in such a way that we couldn't benefit of it. But he also said something mm. that was interesting. He said these same ordinances were not just against us, but they were opposite to us. That's mm. contrary, opposite. Now, contrary to us is this. In Romans chapter 6, we learn the principle of the deliverance from sin. Romans chapter mm. 7, we learn of the principle of the deliverance from the law. So in Romans 7, mm. Paul likens the law to a husband and a wife. In Romans chapter 7. Mm. And he it says it's like mm. a husband who is married to his wife. The woman finds out that the man is good. The man is holy. The man is mm. perfect in all his dealings. Mm. But mm. the woman always feels frustrated because the man is so strict, so demanding, so exact, it is mm. difficult to please him. Mm. Mm. And as thing, time goes by, the woman is getting frustrated. It's like she's not... It's getting to her. And she wants to marry another man mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. seems to be the opposite of her husband. But according to yeah. the law, you cannot marry, divorce, and marry. That is adultery. So the only mm. way the woman shall be free from her husband is to die. One of them has to die. But the husband mm. or the wife must die. In this situation, Paul was making mm. an allusion to the church as the bride, which is the woman, and the mm. perfect holy husband as the law. Then the yeah. second man that was coming as Christ. Mm. And what mm. he was saying was this. The law is strict. According to Matthew chapter 5, mm. from verse 14, the Bible says, you know, mm. Jesus spoke about how the law, uh, 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 in Matthew chapter 5, 8, 14, you see, he says that not a dot or a tittle or a tittle shall be taken away from the word of God. So the word of God shall abide forever. And the law, the mm. law is eternal, actually. <laughs> the word of God is mm. eternal. And that was, that was the man. So the man can't die. So the only person who can die is the woman. According to Romans chapter mm. 7. And he said, the way the woman can die is the only way she'll be free from that demanding husband. The man is strict. He's not bad. He's good. That's what Romans 7 said. The law is good. The law is perfect. He is good. He's perfect. But he's too strict. And he has demands on the woman. But the woman is casual. She's loose mm. in her dealings. But the mm. man is so perfect in his dealings. And it's a stress for her. So the only way she'll be free from this man is mm. for her to die. But if she mm. dies too, mm. she will die without coming back to life. So now this second man comes and presents a certain joint death. So they die together. So that by dying together, they are redeemed from the law that binds the woman to her first husband. 
then she can marry the second mm. husband because she has resurrected as a new person. And this mm. is the action of the law <laughs> and the action of Christ. The law tells you, Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not do. But yeah. do you know the beautiful thing about the second law? The second law, which is Christ mm. Jesus, when he came into the picture, mm. he rendered assistance. Mm and died with the woman and resurrected with the woman to marry her according to Romans chapter 7 and in marrying her she now is like the law he is also perfect he is straight he is good he is strict he is everything the law is but he has a certain dimension the other man demanded but the second man didn't just demand he demanded and provided the supply for you to give back to him that is how Christ married us so when Jesus today tells you Thou shalt not fornicate. In that law is the ability not to fornicate. <laughs> wow. We are wow. not rendered powerless. Mm. So, when you read... <laughs> so when you read Romans chapter 8, it said there is now therefore no condemnation for anyone that is in that nation. The literal mm. Greek says there is now therefore no strengthlessness. <laughs> strengthlessness because once upon a time the Lord said we should in thou shalt not thou shalt not we have no strength to fulfill it every time we try we get mm. tired every time we try we get tired but in the new law the new law after Christ after marrying us from the old law <laughs> he married us into a new law and in the law when he said thou shalt not fornicate in that law is the supply for the demand in the law mm. rise up and pray have you noticed that when the Lord tells you wake up at four and pray and you mm. don't wake up at four and wake up at five or six. Though you are praying, you don't feel the energy of God because it is in his instruction mm. that the energy is in. Mm. Mm. So when the law demands, the supply is in there. It's in the command. Oh, yeah, and that's yeah, what we must yeah. understand. And that's what Jesus did. By reason mm. of buried together with us. The law was opposite to us, telling us, you must, you must, you must, but I will not help you. But the Bible says Christ abolish that oppositeness. <laughs> we were mm. opposite to the Lord. Mm. The Lord was saying, come, come, why are you there without supply? Come. But Christ like came and abolished that oppositeness. And in that mm. abolishing of the oppositeness, we have come to his side. And scripture said, look at what he said. He said that Jesus Christ took it. He took it from the way. <laughs> he took it out of the way and actually to take is apprehend and hold but the tense that was used here is actually the perfect he, mm. the perfect indicative tense okay so the perfect indicative mm. tense means there was a time he did it and the indication implies that it was indicative of the cross he did it on the cross it's perfect indicative and number two two the word took perfect tense means that it is done in the past but it is ever continuous in the present so it means he didn't just uh, take away he's still taking away but he's still taking uh, away because what he did on the cross he has given it a ripple effect over ages so that what he took away on the cross he's still taking away every day and not only so bible said in taking it away he took it out of the way do you know the word way the word way in the greek is the word mesos and mesos implies he took it from out of the mist and when the Bible says from their midst, it is inside us. <laughs> so the mist is inside Ooh. us. So the way is inside us. So he took away that contradictory law from our inside. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you the gospel truth. That law of carnal commandment, that law of demand, that, is, that was once inside our members. You wake up in the morning, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must. No, everything is a law. You don't. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou that. All those things. Bible says he took it away. If we only reckon ourselves with this reality, Every day you wake up in the morning, that law has been taken away from out of the way. And out of the way, the way there is mesos inside you. It has been taken away from you. It has been taken from your inside. So today, when Christians wake up, they go like, ah, God is not telling me thou shalt not. I, I, am I really a Christian? No. It is called the law of the spirit of life. And it's so customized. Now listen to what I'm saying. It's so customized. <laughs> it's so customized. When God tells you to wake up at three, he might tell someone to do it at five. <laughs> because it's been taken away from our midst. Whatever direction he gives everyone is based on their peculiarity and uniqueness according to the pattern and paradigm of God. It's taken away from our midst. So you can wake up at 5 a.m. 
And as you are praying, Mandolo, you have the most perfect fellowship with the Lord. Someone too, the Lord will not allow him to do it at 5 a.m. He will say, wake up at 5. Mm. Do what you have to do. Go to work. At noon, I want to meet you. Then at noon, he also does it. So you go like, ah, you don't wake up at dawn, but you do your prayers at noon. Someone who does midnight prayers all night till morning, according to the leading of the Spirit. So the Holy Ghost will tell someone, you can eat rice. You should eat rice. It's dynamic to everybody. Don't watch TV. It's not a general law for everybody. If you say, don't watch TV as a pastor, no Christians should watch TV. That is a law of the old taxing master. It's inside you. <laughs> But in the new covenant, someone can be told to watch movies. Someone can be told not to watch movies. It is according to the law of life operating in you, according to the demands of the anointing and place you are going in the spirit. The goal of it is that make sure you are led by him. I think we are going on a break and we'll come back again. <laughs> Father of mercy. Man of God. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> All right, friends. So we, we, we're cutting and then we come back. All right, and then Prof will finish up before we go. So we're coming back.